welcome back to Bush Grown Blitz. Thanks for coming along. Uh, a new review up today for you, the M48A Pattern, this American Tier 10 Medium, much maligned and a, a bit of an enigma. <laughs> you don't see a huge amount of them in games. Uh, by far more popular is the T62A. FE4202 is getting up there and the E50M is certainly more popular than it as well. And there are reasons for that. It's not the simplest of tanks to drive and... Despite appearances, uh, it's not actually got the strongest armour. Now, the good things about the tank, it was nerfed in the PC version. Uh, they lowered the accuracy on the move, but I'm happy to say it's still the most accurate tier 10 medium in terms of on-the-move firing, uh, and you'll see some of that in the gameplay. It's also got the best view range of any tier 10 medium. Uh, it's got a 270-metre view range, I run optics with it because I found that's the way to be most successful with the tank, uh, is to use it as a spotter. The bad things about this tank, well, obviously, it's called the Fatten for a reason. If we have a look at the profile, that's the profile of the FB4202, and that's the profile of the T62. Now, the E50M I don't have in my stable, but it's quite a large tank too. It, however, is a sniper. Uh, the pattern is not. It's got an exceptionally weak turret. The mantle is very strong, but either side of the turret uh, mantle can be penned frontally uh, with APCR in some instances or AP. In other instances, it takes heat, but it's very tough to have a, a big bloody turret like that. And just to give you an idea of how enormous this tank is, let's have a look at the American T110E5 medium. That's the medium, that, the so heavy tank of the American line. Have a look at the pattern next to it. It's bigger. It's bigger than the American heavy tank. That's absolute insanity. Even, like, have a look at the IS-7, which is a, a solid enough tank in its own right, although deceptively it is quite a bit smaller than some other heavies. Patton's got it covered in no uncertain terms. So if you're looking for a tank to hide and uh, abuse terrain with it can do that certainly but be aware you've got to be extra careful with it because it will be quite easily seen its camo rating is from all the resources i could gather is about 8.5 percent as opposed to about 16 with the t62 and about 13 with the fe4202 and that effectively makes the the distance it's uh, spotted at quite small it's also it's on the move camera rating is negligible it's absolutely horrific you can spot with it quite comfortably and then remove because despite the poor camo rating, it's going to spot heavies and tank destroyers before they see it most of the time. And that will help your team enormously in terms of dealing damage. I had a big, tough struggle going back to playing this tank. It used to have a 55% win rate for me. I dropped it to 53% in the making of this video. The reason being, I was spoiled playing these two tanks. Uh, I play them with nets as well. I like to be sneaky with them. I like to snipe a lot. But the poor old pattern is not built for that. Uh, it's gun 0.36 dispersion, which is the worst of any of the tier 10 mediums. Uh, and it's got decent alpha. It's a, an average alpha of 350 with a rate of fire of 7.71. But if we have a look at the dispersion of the T62A, 0.34 and a rate of fire of 9.76 on a 300 alpha, Incredible weapon that in the T62 and the FV4202, different kettle of fish again, 0.32. So it's 0.4 of a dispersion point better than the pattern. And obviously the E50M is laser like, 0.30, uh, and hardly comparable. The FV4202 and the E50M share a similar niche in that they're both very, very good snipers. The FV4202, however, has good camo and can actually hide a lot better than the E50M. So, the pattern. Quite weak frontally. Uh, you can be penned all over the turret. You can be penned on the lower glacis, and it's a huge big target there. Uh, very large target on the side. It's the fatten for a reason. The machine gun turret on top of the uh, tank's turret itself is a weak spot also. Um, none of that's good news. But it can be a drive-by shooter, and being a tier 10 medium, it can circle of death just about anything else. It's agile enough, which is surprising for its side. Its top speed, uh, sorry, sorry, being 45 kilometers an hour. 
yeah, the gun's all right. It's a tier 10 medium. It's going to put out a lot of damage. Um, it can move around things. It's going to actually out-muscle some and out-bully some just because it's tier 10 and it's got more armor and it's got a bigger gun. So even when you're driving a tier 10 medium that's the worst tier 10 medium in my opinion, it's still a solid enough tank to play. Anyway, let's have a look at some gameplay and you can see what I'm talking about. Here we are on mines and you'll see immediately it's very solid at drive-by shooting. Very standard mines game. I'm much of the uh, opinion that if you can possibly take the hill and you're in a medium, you sure as hell should be taking the hill. But if you're one medium against three, quite often it's a joke, but you have a crack anyway. But you can see here, uh, I've forwarded, I fast forwarded this a little bit because this is all very much your vanilla mines game where uh, we've got the hill, I'm just going to poke out my head, they're going to poke out their heads. You, the, <laughs> you wait till they look the other way and then you have a shot at them. But what the pattern does do well, you can see it moves pretty comfortably. It's fast enough to get backwards and forwards there without leaving itself exposed too often. Uh, the gun's accurate enough. It puts out a nice sized alpha. It is a solid tier 10. Um, you can see the size of the thing. It's a massive tank from tier 10 medium anyway. Uh, here we go. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have a look at these guys. We're going to finish up these guys here and there will be a couple of shots after this. We move around uh, to the other side as we're being flanked at the rear. And you'll see it's quite accurate. Again, we're at a medium distance here for blitz, semi-medium. Uh, no problems at all hitting big targets like that. And it's quite manoeuvrable. It, again, it got there very nicely. It got there very quickly. Watching the minimap, I can see there's four tanks coming up here, two on my left, two on my right. I'm just going to knock out this KV-4, which is, by the way, my favourite tank to Circle of Death. That thing is so slow, both turret-wise and in terms of uh, traverse. And I don't want to bar the T110E3, but what I will do is, uh, which you can see the, turret, uh, the Patton's gun is accurate enough to do, is just keep him tracked. Uh, we'll try and pen the top of the tank there. Uh, we want to track him here because we can see the T-34 is going behind him. We don't want him to move around and hit his hit our mate. We'll switch to APCR. Just, we've already busted the track up. We'll go through again. Do a bit of damage. Let the T-34 take the hits there from the rest of the team. A bit of a mercenary thing to do, but what are you going to do? And then we're going to go to do a little drive-by shot on the E-75. Again, it's very, very comfortable platform, this tank, for drive-by shooting. It does nicely... E-75's kind of stuffed. And this is a very vanilla game for mines. Very standard for a, a medium. If you get that top area there and you, you, you're aggressive and you take it, you quite often have games that wind up like this. Now watch the on-the-move shooting here from the pattern. That's quite a good shot at range. Bounce one on the turret, which is lovely. And then they're getting away, but... Yeah, another one. So you can see what I mean there. The drive-by shooting from the tank is very, very solid indeed. I was surprised uh, just how accurate it was. And something else, 4,000 damage, pretty solid, but not a lot of spotting done there, which is peculiar to mines, really. There's not a lot of spotting done on that, that map for me in a medium. Now you'll see here uh, we're on Oasis Palms. Uh, often get this situation where you're in a medium, you drive to the top of the map and there's a bit of a standoff. The IF-7 is going to push through and you'll see Patton comfortably circles him round, is very solid and accurate, puts out some nice damage and uh, yeah, it's again, it, it's not that it's a bad tank, it's just that it's not as good in my opinion as the T-62A and that's who it's really competing with. But again, good on the move firing. And it has good gun depression too. So in situations like this where gun depression can be very tricky, you can see the poor old IS-7's gun depression screws him up here. He can't get low enough to really do anything effective. The pattern's got no problems with that. And gun depression is really one of the key elements in this game. And one of the best things about this tank is the gun depression, which I didn't mention earlier. Uh, we'll drive up here. We'll use the corpse of uh, my good buddy, the IS-7, to make sure that we're protected from any snipers, uh, they're going to have to go through our turret, which is quite possible with this tank, but anyway, I digress. 
uh, and we're going to go down and knock off an IS-3 and we'll, we'll have a nice little drive-by shooting there as well that you'll see which is a lovely part of the tank. If you can use it to spot, um, use the gun depression in, in situations to, you know, exploit it and then drive by, shoot the rest of the time, you'll be, you'll be just fine. Uh, and here we are on black gold. Uh, I seem to do a lot of, I get this map a lot. I'm not sure why, but I don't get uh, Winter Melon very often at all, or a few of the others. Anyway, I like to take this uh, tank out to the flank here on Black Gold, and try and get some spots on, in this case, an IS-7, which I'm not interested in taking on frontally. We're just going to put one in there, and retreat. Now there's another T-54 here working with me, which is great, because he's a good little driver. He gets around behind and draws fire. And you can see here, the pattern, using heat, can get through the turret, on the side of the IS-7. I've just taken a hit there, so we're gonna move back left over the hill and out of the way of that Tiger II who's getting us from the side. We're gonna finish off this IS-7 and keep on rolling along the flank. Now, you can see there, the tank could make that shot simply because it has solid gun depression. A lot of the Russian mediums wouldn't be able to do that. They would have had to go over the hill and expose themselves regardless because their gun depression isn't up to scratch. Uh, this T2, the Tiger 2, not sure what he was thinking here. It was by far the biggest problem, but he wasn't watching me. Uh, we're actually doing quite well here. We're now going to go a tank up, but it all goes to uh, all goes to naught in this game, unfortunately. We do lose this one. Um, we keep rolling along the flank. The pattern's view range is good, but its camo is terrible, so I don't want to stay out in the open too much if I don't have to. If you've got it set and, you know, the reticles at its smallest possible uh, or near enough, smallest possible size, it is accurate enough to, to hit medium and long-range shots. It's just not reliable like you might find on the uh, FE4202 or the E50M. Uh, even the good old T62 seems to do a lot better for me on the long range shots than the pattern. Now, I'm tied up with his IS-3. I start making a few mistakes here, unfortunately, which um, cost me the game in the end. I should have knocked this guy off a lot quicker than I than I did. And I dallied about because I thought my other team was gonna hold a, a little at the, uh, at the town area of Black Gold, but there you go. So I reverse angle out and hit the IS-3. The pattern can still do a, a side scraping. It's got big, big tracks, which is one positive. Uh, I don't this shot. I don't know if that's because he hit my gun and I didn't repair it in time. But that's uh, that's the shot that I really regret. Those two there should have both gone in, and if they had have, I would have been happily turned around and facing the other way when trouble came. So you see here, just uh, just happily traversing about on the move, making sure the last shot to go in. And we've now got a wild T-62 coming and a KV-4 up there. And I, I know the KV-4 is going to take a while, so I've got to go through the T-62. I've got three heat rounds left. I switch to them. I'm tracked. I'm trying to use the rock on my left to guard against the T, uh, <laughs> to guard against the KV-4. You can see it can take shots in the track quite comfortably there. If you keep jiggling about, and I want to make sure this one goes in, so I'm going to take one anyway and make sure that I get this now. We're in trouble because we've got two coming. We've got a KV-4 and a T-54. I really should have left the KV-4 alone and gone on the T-54 here because the KV-4 is just a brutally slow tank. If you uh, are traversing around and dogfighting, it's going to do nothing. And eventually I just run out of time and hit points. So tracked, hit, moved, it's all over. But you can see the pattern there performed pretty admirably. It's... um. It's big enough, it's strong enough, uh, and it can bully a few tanks if they're lower tier. It's on the move firing is excellent, and, uh, and it does spot very well. I find I have a lot of games where I get the scout medal on this with the optics. Um, nearly 6,000 damage there, which is, is pretty solid. And uh, now we're going to have a look at dead rail. Now we're doing the dead rail thing. We're spotting at the start because we're a good tank. We're equipped with optics, and we will see a lot of tanks. And there you go, six tanks. There's your spotter's medal right away, and it lets our team deploy exactly where it should. 
and we see that they're all moving down to the bottom, they don't have anyone on the flank, and uh, really it makes for a pretty comfortable victory. Uh, that's one of the best things about this tank. It can spot really well, and because it's going to outspot heavies and tank destroyers, it lets you deploy successfully, uh, and it's fast enough to get in and out quick enough. But a T-62 with optics would be a better bet. It would be seen far less effectively by the enemy and it would see just about as far. Um, still in all, it is a tier 10 medium. And a tier 10 medium, if you let it have free reign and if you let it constantly fire, will do an enormous amount of damage. And it is one of the most effective vehicles for distributing damage. I mean, 7.71 rounds a minute at 350 alpha is a big chunk of, uh, of damage to be putting out if you're allowed to do it. Because we deployed correctly here, you'll see we are now on the blind side of the enemy. They're stuck between two flanks. We can comfortably go down here and miss shots like this. <laughs> and uh, it's not the tank's fault, that's all me. I'd love to blame that on dispersion. Anyway, we set this guy on fire. Everything's good. Torn between two lovers here. I want to go over and help with that E100, but I make the decision that if I leave this guy alone, now that's 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 the pattern's fault. That was fine, that shot, I reckon. Here we go again. We make sure of this one, and then we take off. Poor old uh, E100 here gets a bit of a reprieve, but I will turn around and have a crack at him now. He's going to give himself up to target practice. Again, tier 10 medium, if they're going to give you the opportunity to hit 350 and then hit another one for 350 and then hit the IS-8 for 350, there's a thousand damage in a, in a very, very short period of time. And you'll see that's a, that's a low damage roll, but you're still looking at about a thousand damage in those three shots very quickly. And it's manoeuvrable enough that I can get back around and do whatever I want to do. Uh, I try and flank the E100, but I should have been looking at the map because he comes back out and gets one into my tracks there. And I think that's my problem with the pattern. Everything else that's a tier 10 medium is really defined by certain sexy characteristics. The FV4202 has Hesh as an ammunition and it's very accurate and it has the second best camo in its class. And uh, it's got good view range too. It's 265, it's only five meters shorter than the pattern. Uh, the T-62A has exceptional rate of fire, it's got outstanding camo, it's got a really low sneaky profile and a, and a turret that can bounce till the cows come home. And the E-50M has a laser for a cannon and it, it goes 60 kilometres an hour and it's, it can ram and blow stuff up and it's you know, a really, really good sniper. And the pattern's a bit more vanilla, it doesn't have anything like that, it's got an extra 5 metres view range and it's good at firing on the move. but. At the same time, it's the fattest tank going around and it's the easiest to hit while firing on the move. And just listen to me talk while I donk shots. Uh, there's a bloke asked me for a plat in a second here and I have to tell him I'm filming for a review, like a movie star. Wonderful stuff. And because of that, it's to me the least of the tier 10 mediums. But that's... Uh, you know, that's not saying a bad thing. It's still a good tank, and in the hands of a good driver, it's going to kick my ass in a, in, in a T-62. It's just I feel that as a tank, you can probably get more from some of the other tanks. Uh, you can probably do do better in the other tanks and, and fulfill your potential as a driver in the other tanks. And I guess if you're driving down a line to get to T-10, you want to have something at the end of the rainbow that's worth aiming for. And for me, being least among equals is, is the problem for the pattern. It's, it's, for my money, the worst tier 10 medium, which is a lot worse than saying it's the worst tier 7, a lot better than saying it's the worst tier 7 heavy or something like that, because it's still a good tank. It'll still output good DPM. It'll still be out of circle of death most other tanks. It'll still, you know, get behind a JPZ E100 and, and smash it. And it's agile enough to juke shots like... I did from this object and it, it'll hit fairly out, well at range, it's just not the best. And that's not the kind of ringing endorsement you want when you get to tier 10. If you get to a tier 10 tank, you're doing it because you want to get something unique, something that's got that special characteristic that really makes the tank. So that's the M48A pattern. I'm sure people will disagree, but 
there you go. It's my view, my review, my channel. Uh, thanks very much for coming along. Subscribe if you want. 4K there or nearly 4K, six spots. And uh, I'm Bushcore on Blitz. See you soon.